Hi YouTube, Coin Picker here. Okay, this is not a thrift store find. Pretty much all the thrift stores except Value Village is open. Of course, Value Village, basically like savers in the States. Um, actually, uh, before I talk about this, uh, I did pop into two Value Village stores in the past few days because those are the few thrift stores over here that are starting to open up again. So the first Value Village, uh, I did find a bag of souvenir spoons. Um, it was like a bag of like 10 hanging on the wall, you know, like on the pegboard. And uh, I did spot one 800 silver spoon and another sterling silver spoon. But I think they wanted like $7.99 plus taxes for that. And the rest of these uh, spoons were junk pretty much. So I did the calculations. I'm thinking if it's only those two spoons, I would definitely not pay four bucks each. Uh, sure, I would have made a you know, tiny profit, like, I don't know, 20%, 30%. But generally, I like to double up at the, you know, at the bare minimum, to, you know, double my money. So I passed on that. And um, the other store I went today, also Value Village. Um, oh, and I did notice a lot of changes, a lot of social distancing, stickers on the floor, you know, like reminding people, and as well as arrows. You know, basically, you know, aisles are one way only. Um, some people wearing masks, some people wearing masks and gloves. Um, yeah, so, uh, did find, I don't know, funny, found a single, uh, sterling spoon. I didn't buy it because, uh, it was this tiny little demi tasse spoon from a set, uh, not a souvenir spoon. And it was in the baggie, also on a pegboard in the cutlery area. But they wanted like $4.99. That's even more expensive per spoon compared to the baggie I saw the you know the day before. So I put it back there, you know, maybe uh some lucky person who's more interested will pick it up. Um yeah, so there was nothing else, but it was really fun to finally get out there and search again. But this find is actually an online auction find uh, I bought a couple weeks back. And I uh, already opened it up. Uh, it was a, uh, let's see. Little, well, it's, I guess more like coin related find. Um, basically, it was described as a Japanese, you know, silver item. Uh, like a souvenir piece or bullion piece. But, well, actually, I should say, I paid about 40 bucks Canadian. Uh, got it from a, well, it, it was a retailer, so I had to pay tax and shipping. Finally got it. But why would I get it, right? I mean, if it was what they described it as, then that would have been eh, a fair price. You know, nothing special. But it is something totally different. Now, you see there's some like Chinese characters. Well, the seller thought it was a Japanese item because Japanese still use ja uh, Chinese characters on occasion. Uh, but in this particular use, it is actually Chinese character characters on a Chinese item. So what I believe it is, it would be um, a silver, you could say a silver item. Um, basically, it's from a silversmith in China. And um, I'm thinking, you know, maybe... Um, it was a way to, again, you know, maybe make souvenir items, you know, bullion items for people to buy. I'm, I'm thinking probably from the 
early, I don't know, early 1900s, maybe the 1920s. So here, the characters. I can't really read the first one up top, but the middle one is, I think it's Sui, and that one's Wa. So it's some sort of silversmith's name, something Sui Wa. Uh, gold, or gold shop, I guess like a jeweler or silversmith. Um, so it says Gum Dim. Gum Dim is a gold shop. Sup Chop. These it's a compound word sup like ten I guess it's ten. Chok means pure, so it means absolute pure. Man or fine, fine absolute pure fine. So I guess they're talking about silver because sometimes they don't even you know put the character for silver there, but on the bottom it says hoi or ocean. And I'm figuring that's part of the character for Shanghai. Like, Shanghai means Shanghai. So maybe it is an abbreviation of the city name. So that would make sense because during the early, 19, well, early 20th century, uh, turn of the uh, 21st, I guess, turn, yeah, turn of the 21st century, basically from, you know, 18, late 1800s to like, you know, World War Two, Shanghai uh, actually had like a Japanese concession. Like basically, there was a treaty, a treaty where uh, the Japanese ruled part of the city in Shanghai. Like their sphere of influence, which was won through war and occupation, right? So I think this is probably during that period. And um, if it was not made to be sold as a, you know, Japanese style souvenir or bullion piece, uh, perhaps it might have been to mark his uh, stock because, you know, silversmiths, they probably carry a lot of, you know, uh, material, silver, gold in the shop, uh, in their safe uh, to make, you know, nice sellable items. So this is a wafer of silver, um, probably this be, you know, like sort of ready to be used for the creation of some sort of nice silverware or, or decoration, decorative item. So just so no one would like steal their raw materials, they would probably stamp, you know, their ownership on there. So just like how we uh, used to uh, put like or inscribe our uh, driver's license on our, you know, on our things, just in case if, you know, it was stolen, the police find it, it can go back to its right, rightful owner. So this, this weighs 22 grams and there's no markings on the back. It does look like Someone tried to saw into it just to maybe acid test it or make sure it's silver through and through right there. But uh, yeah, it makes a big difference. I mean, it really, well, I mean, big difference of where it was made. All right. So this does have the look and the size of a traditional silver or gold wafer in feudal Japan. Um, but, all right, the fact that it's actually Chinese uh, opens it up to a totally different group of collectors. So I would say it would be, all right, instead of $40 what I paid, I think I could easily resell it for 200 plus dollars right away. But it will go into my collection. I do like this, these sort of oddball items. So, 
have it. All right, bone picker, stop it. You're ruining my video. All right. We have lots of cats next door, so. So if you see here, really cool chop marks. And the toning within the chop marks is very consistent of silver toning. You can see, you know, the general look of it. Uh, I even put a magnet on it and it is not magnetic. I didn't bother to acid test it. I do not want to uh, dis discolor it because I did buy it as a collectible. Uh, collectible. But yeah, really cool find. Anyways, I hope you guys and gals enjoyed this video. There's a lot of good stuff out there, sometimes mismarked, and that's where you'll get the deals. Anyways, please like, subscribe, and comment. Coin Picker out.